Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 16 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. We have been studying about the chemical properties of alcohols and phenols. And in this I told you that alcohols and phenols can act as nucleophiles and as electrophiles depending on which bond is breaking. When the bond between oxygen and hydrogen breaks, alcohols act and phenols act as nucleophiles. And when the bond between carbon and oxygen breaks, they act as electrophiles. We have studied the kind of reactions that are involved, but I would like to explain those, uh, the first property that is the acidic nature of alcohols and phenols is because of the breaking of the oxygen and hydrogen bond, thereby releasing hydrogen as hydrogen ion or as a proton. So they become Bronsted acids they release protons, so they are Lewis acids also. We will understand the acidity in alcohols in this video. And in the next video, I'll be discussing that what is the reason for the acidity of phenols and what kind of acids. We'll try to study these acids or alcohols as acids. We are not going into the chemical property here. We are understanding the reason for the acidity and whether they would be strong acids, weak acids, what kind of acids would they be. So let us start with the video. Acidity of alcohols. We have studied that when alcohols react with metals, they release uh, H positive ions, that is, or hydrogen gas. And when uh, alcohols react with a base like sodium hydroxide. They result in the formation of a salt and water, which shows that alcohols are acidic in nature. I also mentioned this in the previous video that the acidic nature depends on the OH bond. The acidic nature is basically because of the OH bond. Why? Because unless and until hydrogen can be released as H positive, a substance cannot act as an acid or they do there are other definitions but depending on the Lewis definition and the Bronsted definition a release of proton or H positive should take place which is possible if the hydrogen in the molecule is attached to a highly electronegative element like oxygen right so if it is attached to oxygen the hydrogen can be released as a proton like HCl, in that hydrogen is attached to chlorine, which is again highly electronegative. An electronegative element or an atom which is electronegative and is attached to hydrogen will have a tendency to pull the shared pair of electrons towards itself, thereby releasing the hydrogen without its electron, which is H positive and that's why it acts as an acid. So we say acidic character of alcohols is due to the polar nature of the OH bond. The oxygen is deficient, really needs electrons. It has six electrons in its outermost shell. It needs two electrons to complete its octet. So it very gladly either shares it or just snatches the electron from an atom which would easily lose the electron. Hydrogen on the other hand is the most electropositive non-metal. So hydrogen is in comparison to oxygen is very electropositive. So hydrogen would tend to leave by leaving its electron behind that is as H positive. So it is this OH bond which is responsible for the acidic character of both alcohols and phenols. But we are studying only alcohols, the understanding only alcohols in this video. When an electron releasing, you know, all alkyl groups, are electron releasing groups they give out electrons they are electron rich they electron releasing means they push electrons away they do not attract electrons they push electrons away from themselves because carbon is not a very electronegative element and when it has all the hydrogens which are also kind of pushing electrons away carbon also starts pushing the electrons away from it so a methyl ethyl propyl whatever alkyl group is electron releasing so when an electron releasing group like a methyl or an ethyl group is attached to the carbon to which the OH is attached, what happens? Oxygen needs electrons. Try to understand. Oxygen needs electrons and hydrogen does not need electrons. It's not so desperate. It says, okay, you take the electron from me. I'll leave as H positive. 
that would make it acidic. But unfortunately, when an electron releasing group is present, this group is pushing electrons away from it towards oxygen. So it is kind of fulfilling the need of oxygen. It is pushing it towards carbon and carbon in turn, it's a chain reaction. Carbon in turn will push the electrons towards oxygen. And therefore that dire need of oxygen to fulfill is no longer there. It is getting that electron density or the negative charge from the methyl group or the alkyl group to which the carbon is attached. So the presence of an alkyl group decreases the polarity. This was very electronegative and this was very electropositive. Due to this electron charge that is given to oxygen, the negative charge of oxygen is fulfilled. It is now no longer that strongly deficient. So the polarity between these two bonds decreases. Hydrogen still is ready to give its electron, but oxygen says, no, I have, I have electrons from this methyl group. I don't need it from you. So what will happen? The hydrogen will not happily leave. A substance will be a strong acid only if hydrogen happily leaves the compound, right? So I apologize. I have moved my class to a different floor of the house. And so you can hear uh, footsteps on the upper floor. Um, so carrying on with our argument, look at this one degree alcohol. One degree alcohol has only one alkyl group attached to the carbon. Two degree will have two alkyl groups. The two alkyl groups, both of them are electron releasing. So they will make this oxygen even more, uh, you know, electropositive in a way. It'll, it'll reduce the electronegativity or the deficiency of electrons of oxygen. So the polarity will be still lesser. With three alkyl groups, this oxygen stands no chance of losing the uh, hydrogen as H positive because there's a lot of electron density that it is receiving from three different alkyl groups. So we say an electron releasing group like a methyl and ethyl group increases the electron density of oxygen tending to decrease the polarity of the OH bond. If the polarity decreases, the acidity decreases. Why? Because when polarity decreases, the chances of hydrogen leaving as H positive decreases. So what do we understand from this? That this decreases the acid strength. That one degree, if we compare these three, which one would be the strongest acid among these three? Will it be a primary alcohol, secondary alcohol or tertiary alcohol? Considering that all the alkyl groups are the same. Let us say all of them are methyl groups. All R's are methyl groups. Then this has only one methyl group. This has two methyl groups and this has three methyl groups. So the electron releasing power of this is the most. So this is the polarity of this bond is the least. So this is the least acidic. And this is the most acidic out of these three. But another hint that we get from this is that even if one alkyl group is present, alcohol, that is itself is making alcohol a little weak. So even if alcohols are acidic, they are actually very weak acids. They are not strong acids. So let us see what kind, how strong are the acids. First of all, they are weak. Weaker, weakest. And how weak? It's interesting that they are weaker than even water. You know, in a tug of war, if I am, uh, I'm not a strong person, but if you assume that whatever my strength is, if there's someone who's even less strong than me, I am stronger than that person. So in comparison, I am stronger and the other person is weaker. So if I am an acid and there's another acid that's even weaker than me, then that substance will act as a base and I'll act as an acid. But if I react with, an, with another acid which is stronger than me, I will act as a base and that one will become the acid. So that one will release the proton and I will have to accept that proton. But if I am reacting with this one who's weaker than me, I will have the stronger tendency to push the, the proton and that one will have to act as a base even if it is acidic in nature. Oh, so music is also on now. So alcohols, however, are weak acids or weaker acids than even water. This can 
typically shown when water reacts with an alkoxide. What is an alkoxide? If the hydrogen has already been removed as the proton. So now what is left is the alkoxide, RO negative. The ROH would have been an alcohol and the H has been removed as H positive, so RO negative. The one electron of hydrogen is here, so that forms the third lone pair, you get RO negative. This acts as a base when you make it react with water. How do we see this? How do we know this? When you make the alkoxide react with an acid, what we get is an alcohol. And the water molecule turns into OH negative. What does this show? Think of that example. I am the, let us say, I am the, this is me. I am alcohol, this is water, and this is any normal regular acid. We consider water not to be acidic. But in this case, alcohol is that weakest one that it even if water reacts with it, it acts as a base and that is what we notice here that water lost the H positive and that H positive was gained by RO, RO negative that is alkoxide so the base it it accepted the proton it received the proton so according to Bronsted definition it is a proton acceptor therefore it is a base so the alcohol becomes a base and water, which has released the proton, in this case, so look at water, it has got a promotion, it's an acid here. <laughs> so it acts as an acid in the presence of alcohol. So although alcohols are acidic, their acidic strength is very weak, even weaker than water. So you get OH negative. From this, what do we understand? Let's read this. This shows that water is a better proton donor that is, well, who is a proton? Good proton donor is a stronger acid. So a better proton donor that is a stronger acid than alcohol. Also, it shows that the alkoxide ion is a better proton acceptor. That is, who is a proton acceptor? A base. So alkoxide is a better proton acceptor than hydroxide. This is interesting. According to the Lewis definition of as bases, Bases are those substances which release OH negative ion in water. So this OH negative ion makes the base basic according to the Lewis uh, definition. So when we say that RO negative accepts the proton better than OH negative, it shows that RO negative is a stronger base than OH negative. What does this imply? What will happen if that is the case? What did we understand? That the alcohol is a weaker acid than water. And also the opposite, that alcohol is actually a stronger base than water. So what do we understand from this? So also it shows that alkoxide ion is a better proton acceptor, that is a base, than hydroxide ion, which suggests that alkoxides are stronger bases. So what do we understand from this? That if you have sodium ethoxide, if you have sodium in, in this place, if you have sodium ethoxide is a stronger base than sodium hydroxide. If this was sodium hydroxide and sodium ethoxide, we know sodium hydroxide is a very strong base, but sodium ethoxide would actually be a stronger base than sodium hydroxide. This is what it proves because the ethoxide accepted the proton easily. It was easier for the uh, what alkoxide to accept the proton and it was uh, than OH negative. Therefore, it is a stronger base. So this shows that if you have two um, bases, sodium ethoxide and sodium hydroxide, which one would be stronger? Sodium ethoxide would be stronger. So alcohols act as Bronsted bases as well. They also act as Bronsted bases. What is a Bronsted base? Uh, a Bronsted base. A Bronsted acid is a proton donor. And a Bronsted base is a proton acceptor. So it means that alcohols act as acids and bases both. It's very easy to understand that. You remember I told you if I have someone weaker, I can act as an acid with him. But if I have someone stronger, I can act as a base with him. So 
What happens? Why does it accept? Why does it accept a proton? Why does it act as a base? Because it has oxygen and oxygen has lone pairs of electrons. I told you anything that is acidic is basically positive and anything that's basic has negative charge. So this lone pair of electrons which is available as negative charge makes the alcohol, sorry, on oxygen. These lone pairs, they make it basic. So we say alcohols act as Bronsted bases as well. The presence of the unshared pair of pairs of electrons on oxygen makes them proton acceptors. So that makes them accept protons and therefore they act as bases. So from this, what do we understand? That alcohols can act both as acids and bases. They act as acids because they can release protons. They act as bases they, because they can accept protons. But they can accept protons because of the lone pair of electrons on oxygen. And they can donate protons because of the bond that breaks between oxygen and hydrogen. Right? Second thing, what do we understand? That the more the number of alkyl groups, the weaker is the alcohol as an acid. So alcohols are basically very weak acids, even weaker than water. So this is what we understand about the acidity of alcohols. So uh, with this, I'll wind up this video. If you wish to watch other videos of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top of the uh, video. And if you uh, liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really encourages me. I like to uh, see it. And um, well, if you would like to help your friends, please recommend my channel to your friends, subscribe to it and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching. Bye bye for now.